Well, the big issue for Iona is staying on the glass with UConn and staying out of foul trouble so that they don't have to go too deep into a very short bench as it is. Debbie, the strength of the Iona Gales and Rick Pitino, their guard play, Danis Jenkins and Walter Clayton have been off the charts. That's where their strength lies. How good can they be with the money on the table against Connecticut? They are two-way guards that can score at all three levels and defend at a high level as well. Andre Jackson answers the bell. Andre Jackson is letting everybody know right now, if you want to play me with a cushion, go ahead and bring it. He drills the first shot of the game. Another young man who knows this building well, played a couple of games here as a high school player, started Albany Academy just up the road. Iona, first trip. Jenkins! A confident start. That was Barrett's John Luis off the feed from Jenkins. All time at three! Said no go! This young man is a monster for this team. What a season it has been for him. Leading score in the Big East. And a good start for the Huskies. Look how quickly UConn slices through that DN. John Louis again. He's sending the same message. We got two guys that are 24% three point shooters starting the game with triples. John Luis was actually the defensive player of the year in the NAC this season, but he buries a couple of threes to get the party started for the Gales. And Debbie, there's nothing about this Iona team that tells you that they're intimidated in oh, the no. least. No, they are scrappy, they are hardworking, and you know they are prepared. They will not be intimidated by any opponent. Triple drive, Newton turned back. Clayton was there, then Caravan miss. Unable to squeeze it, Jackson. This is Hawkins. And the Huskies come up empty. And the number one offensive rebounding team in the country showing why with multiple attempts there. And no team has been better off the glass. And how about this start? That is Jenkins. Pretty mid-range baseline, Jay. All we want is players to make shots, right? We just want to see made shots on both sides. Jenkins, the junior out of Dallas. But they're just taunting Jackson to take another trip. But Caravan, you got to come out on a long closeout on him. Alex Caravan, a redshirt freshman, fantastic year. All freshman team in the Big East. And he was actually freshman of the week six times this season. Hot shooting start for both teams. And we said here to Clayton. He'll fire. Got it. <laughs> How about that backcourt? Jenkins and Clayton, tough competitors. Walter Clayton, as Iona has hit its first three from deep. Last seven for Clayton, 20 points per game on a 47% clip from deep. Sonogo puts it in the deck. That's a big matchup against Junior Joseph. But it left Sonogo for a chance. He's got so much skill, left-handed finish. A great size at the rim, and he catches that deep. Forget about it. Sonogo, the junior from the West African country of Mali. What a player he's become for Danny Hurley. Jackson is steal. And Sonogo with a flush. I don't know who plays better defense on the sideline, Danny Hurley or Rick Pitino, but they're both getting after it early. Or this feels like a back alley street fight uh -huh. here at the start. This is fun. This is amazing. March, it's what it's supposed to be. Junior Joseph, the kick. This is Jean Luis. Left it short, well played by Hawkins. Connecticut finished number 11 in the final AP poll. 25 wins this season. In the dance for a third straight year. Yeah, this all the way back to 06, the last time that's happened. Newton from D. Yeah, this is a Connecticut team that was number two in the country at one point when they were 14-0 to start the season. Then they got a rough patch in their Big East schedule. And now they're back, and a lot of people think that they are not seated properly as a four. They got a lot of people got them going to the final four. Jackson off the miss.
Well, we have some fireworks here at the start. Three-point shooting for both of these two teams. Connecticut with a three-point advantage. Iona starts the game three for three outside the arc. But then on the back side of full court pressure, UConn, they are looking to score. They are attacking the rim. Let's see if Iona will back off just a little bit, maybe three quarter court so they can set their D because UConn is advancing the ball quickly up the floor. So Rick Pitino calling the early timeout to try to settle down his gales. As we hit the 15 minute mark, Iona the champions out of the MAC. 27 and 7, a team that has won 14 straight, third longest active among any Division I team. Clayton. Last time Iona lost, that could go all the way back to January the 29th. It was in this building against Siena College. Debbie, that was a long time ago. Yeah, then they rattled off 14 in a row, including the MAC Tournament Championship, where Rick Pitino told us yesterday it's the most pressure he's ever felt in his basketball career. <laughs> Trying to get his team here. That's pretty hard to believe, isn't it? With all that he's won. All those one big lead, so much pressure, one to shoot. Hawkins has the fire. So not a good possession that time for the Huskies. Good Iona defense. All the way to the cup. Berwick, Jean Luis. How about the start from that kid to the graduate transfer? Yeah, he's got eight early. He only averages eight. Already over a season average. Sonogo misses. And Connecticut comes up empty again. I love that drag screen action up the floor. Clayton around a screen, he'll fire. Splash! And Iona punches back. Unlimited range. Player of the year with shots like that. And Iona does back off a little bit. Smiro, not the full court pressure after main buckets. Back and set their D. Good ball movement. Hawkins right back. Jackson left open. Too much. And the rebound pulled by Junior Joseph. Clayton was the number three leading scorer in the MAC this season. At just under 17 per game. Jenkins hanging baseline. Did he shoot that over the corner of the backboard? That was, was a tough angle. Close. But Debbie, you can see the confidence with which this team plays, and they follow the pattern and the tone set by their two guards, Jenkins and Clayton. Newton. What a matchup against Clayton there. But they're giving Jackson that three. And he makes him pay for it. Oh, he's going to have to hit a couple. He's hit two. He'll have to hit a few more, I think, before Coach Bertino will adjust. There's Andre's mother, Trisha. Now the nervousness of her mom looking on. Can you imagine at this juncture what a ride it's been? Hometown kid. Dribble drive. Boy, Jean Luis just keeps on coming. Rick Pitino's kids showing some early fight. And Danis Jenkins, who has done it all season, impossible angle for Iona. Fun start, Iona one point lead as a 13 seed in the West. Oh, you can follow Highlight Her for everything you need to see her do in sports and culture. Scan the QR code now and don't miss another moment as we say hello once again to A.J. Ross. Coach Spiro, Rick Pitino's first year assistant, Talik Brown, was actually a part of Danny Hurley's coaching staff last year. Brown was also a part of UConn. He was a starting point guard for four years under Jim Calhoun. He was a part of the 2004 national team. He spent four years as UConn's director of player development under Hurley before he left. And Brown told me as soon as he found out he was going to play against UConn in the opening round, Adonis Nogo texted him saying, you ready? It's going to be war. And he laughed and responded, I know. A few of the coaching staff and other players have texted back and forth with Brown. And after selection Sunday, he said there hasn't been any communication. They're just going to let their play speak for it themselves today, guys. AJ, great stuff. It's been such a, a fun little juicy storyline for this one. And, and Talik Brown, such a huge part of that 04 championship team. Still their all-time assist leader. 
But that means just like Rick planned it, right? Before the season, <laughs> knew that this would be the first round matchup. Right. Coach Hurley said he wished he had uh, burned all those files that Talis <laughs> took with him on his way to Iona. Good looking three from the corner, Naheem Aline. And UConn comes up empty again. This has been a hot hand so far. John Luis, not that time. And then a rebounding foul. This is going to be against Connecticut as Nelly Jr. Joseph knocked to the floor. Boy, you want a couple of masterful coaches? You've come to the right place. The Hall of Famer and Danny Hurley. Back here at MVP Arena, Danny and Hurley, both teams starting out really hot shooting. What did you think about the pace to start this one and the way your guys are defending the perimeter? Yeah, I'm not sure if we can keep up this pace. Obviously, the two defenses will tighten up here. They're, they're shooting 70% from the field, which obviously we've got to change, but I like how we're playing offensively. Seven assists, no turnovers. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Danny Hurley, third straight trip to the dance. At the helm of this program, there's his pop, Bob Sr., legend as a high school coach, St. Anthony, down in Jersey City, about a two-and-a-half-hour drive from where we are here. Hall of Famer, already an emotional week. Bob, his wife, Christine. Chris is here in the building, and there's Danny's wife, Andrea. College sweethearts, they met at Seton Hall. Danny said she's a Jersey girl. She's been by his side ever since. Two-point game with 11.30 to play. I'm not sure if that was a lob or a shot from Jenkins. Nearly went. Open look at a transition three. It's Joey Calcaterra wasting no time. They advanced past the basketball so well. That is faster up the floor than trying to dribble through that Iona pressure. Danny Hurley causing Joey California. Grew up in the Bay Area, San Francisco. This is Junior Joseph. Tough shot. Over the top of Donovan Kling, a 7 2 backup center who's come in for Danny Hurley. Open look at a three. That's Osborne Shema. Missed it. This is Hassan Diara now running the point. As both coaches go a little bit deeper into their bench. Brand new perimeter on the floor along with Kling for UConn. The R, the Texas A&M transfer. This is Jackson. Now Aline. Got it! Naheem Aline, the transfer from Virginia Tech. Bill Murray likes it. Bill St. Luke on Danny Hurley's staff. Bill's brother, a St. Mary's <laughs> alum, is actually here in the building. They could be on a, a collision course in the second round. Clayton, what a pass into the corner. John Luis missed it, and it belongs to the Huskies. No oh, best Coke ever. Only one way to find out. Take a taste. Another substitution here by Rick Pitino. Silas Sunday, a freshman, still a raw talent. 26 appearances. He actually started a game this season. As Pitino now digs deep. This is Diara, well challenged by Jenkins. So we cross the midway point, first half. Connecticut holding a four point lead. Good defensive close by Diara. Jenkins off the bounce. Little floater from Shema misses, and Klingen clears. Cleaning up the glass, Klingen. They could go five out motion here, even with Klingen on the floor. Diara is going to pull. A little bit too much. And it's tracked down by Osborne Shema. Then the Gales recalibrate their offense. The only got a piece from the back, and it's Sunday. Anything Sunday gives them from an offensive standpoint is a bonus. He's just trying to use up some minutes to give Nelly a break. There's our lead, but it gave him a lot of space. That may be the best look he gets. Debbie, any surprises so far? Iota looks like oh. they feel like they belong here. 
And their pace is good, ball movement is good, and they make shots early, which gave them some confidence. Shemmer misses badly on a three. This is Alin bringing the trailer, and he's headed to the free throw line. See, this is the depth of UConn. When you can go to your bench, and you can change the rhythm of the game and use your depth. It's been a lockdown defensive effort by UConn with this group on the floor, and then they transition quickly. Again, advance pass, bucket for UConn. So Donovan Klinging, another local kid, is only a freshman. He grew up in Bristol, Connecticut. Started as a high school player at Bristol Central. Young man who has overcome so much. Top 40 recruit for Danny Hurley. Lost his mom, Stacy, to breast cancer back in 2018. He was only an eighth grader at the time. His mom, such a beloved member of the Bristol community. Three sports star at Bristol Central. And then at the University of Maine, Debbie, as a basketball player. She was a middle school teacher in Bristol for 35 years. It's a heartbreaking story, but he wears number 32 to honor his mom. That was her number. He uses that as inspiration. I'm sure she's awfully proud of him. There's the kick. Sadiku Ibanayo. And he wastes no time putting his imprint on this one. And again, full court pressure now, changing it up with this lineup on the floor for Rick Pitino. Their defense has been pretty solid in the quarter court. They've been beaten in transition. That's where UConn has been able to get this lead. Rick Pitino doesn't have a ton of scoring off his bench, but Ivy Nayo, pretty good three-point shooter. That's a good sign for Iona. Offensive rebound. Look at Clayton, drop step. Just masterful. Number one in the nation in offensive rebounding percentage at 39% of their misses. Tough loader off glass from Jenkins won't go. He alters that shot, two on one for UConn. Calcaterra missed it. Here comes Ivy Nile. Now they'll settle things down as we come up on the seven minute mark. Poked away, well done, Diara the steal. Off the floor, two on one, and then the clean strip from the back. Who touched it last? I think it went off his leg. The officials are going to come together. Michael Jefferson got the strip in the transition from the back. And now they're going to say jump ball. Possession arrow favors the Gales. And Danny Hurley is red hot. Connecticut by four. Another look, what a play by Jefferson. We'll come back on TBS. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by Experian. Raise your credit game today. Belfour Property Restoration. And by Dove Men. Hydration for healthier, smoother skin. Welcome back to MVP Arena. Coach Rick Pitino, so UConn seems to be hurting you guys a little bit in transition, but you recently switched to the full you court. Speak loud like I said it. UConn recently was hurting you in transition. You switched to the full court. What kind of tone do you hope that sets? Well, the problem is Barrett John Luis has given up three threes for guys in the scouting report that don't normally shoot it. Everybody's a shooter in the NCAA with low clock. So we've got to do a better job there. And the guards have got to stop watching to see if the shot's going in, and they got to get back quick. Thank you, Coach. All right, AJ, it's been 40 years since Rick Pitino made his first entrance into the dance. Crazy to think all the way back, 1983, Boston University. He was only 31 years of age at the time, and of course, Rick has been in the news year three with Iona, has them in the tournament for the second time. Debbie, who knows what the future holds for the Hall of Famer, but he is fully present with this program. What a job he has done, and what a, a journey it's been. Well, I see a little Billy the Kid Donovan there in that Providence run, mm -hmm. run right there, and then, of course, a national championship with Kentucky and with Louisville. But he says his interests right now lie with his team, and all the rumors that are speculating about Coach Patino and Iona or some other Big East jobs. 
He says the biggest factor is winning and impacting people, and he loves Iona, he loves representing Iona, and he really cares about these guys. Walter Clayton. How much this kid has in his offensive toolbox. So impressive. Michael Jefferson for the steal. Looks like Newton is shaken up and Clayton takes a bump. But it was interesting to hear Patino's comments with AJ in the scouting report. You always have to expect the unexpected this time of year. Oh, I love everybody's a shooter in a late clock in March. I mean, that's magic. That's golden. Another look here, a little bit of contact. Newton got the brunt of that from Jefferson. So Jefferson with a steal and now will take a seat. Reminder, you can watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. Clayton into the corner. This is Ivy Nayo. What a start for that young man, the freshman from Ghana. Are you kidding me? The Iona bench is providing some points for Rick Patino's team? It's a little bit of a surprise, right? Because he has utilized that bench to take some minutes up Give some guys a rest, but they are staying right here, stride for stride with UConn. Talk to some of the Iona folks. They say he's got all kinds of offensive talent, still a little bit raw, but what a start. On the biggest stage he's played on as Connecticut turns it over again. Walter Clayton Jr.'s decision-making has been outstanding early. Walter Clayton, exquisite pass. He's in full command of the offense right now. Three-point game for Sonoga couldn't quite get high enough. And it's last touched by the Huskies. Oh, you can get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament at NCAA.com. W can feel the momentum switch. Seven straight points for the Gales. Again, can't overstate the importance of their familiarity with this building. Only two and a half hours from home. Nothing about this team tells you that they're a 13 seed. Top shot that time, Junior Joseph missed it. Here comes Newton. So the pain left it short. Brookshire got a piece of that on the way up. Right now, the Huskies are out of sorts. Yeah, really switching off on Clayton, trying to keep the pressure on. It's tapped out by Shema, but Connecticut controls. As we cross the five-minute mark, the Huskies have not scored in three minutes. I think they might consider something for Hawkins here. He has not scored. Jackson had a high hit early, not that time. Hawkins turned back. Shema got a piece, loose ball caravan. Where Shema is all over the place. And Jordan Hawkins, Debbie, 0 of 4, still has not hit a basket. So his struggles from that Big East tournament loss against Marquette continuing. And look at the bench, to your point. That's what we're talking about, right? These guys are supposed to come in and give some minutes around timeouts. Help Coach Patino manage the game and manage his starters' minutes. What a beautiful drop step here. Free throws coming up. Or will they? Looks like the contact came before the shot as Klingin worked on the box. So a side or perhaps underneath out of bounds here for Connecticut. It's on Junior Joseph. That's his first. I thought he traveled. Looks like he changed his pivot feet. Or pivot foot, I should say. <laughs> Calcaterra, the inbounder. This is Klingon. All that size. Pivots. No. Hawkins. Again, number one rebounding team in the country as they crash the glass with a vengeance. Klingon. Caravan. Get it. Shot for Connecticut. We are tied. How about Klingon with the body control not to roll to the rim and get that charge and make that read. Caravan delivers. 
And we cross the four-minute mark. Well, how good has that kid been? Derek Jean-Louis, the graduate transfer out of Lehigh Acres, Florida. He's got 11. Hawkins. Klingon. And he'll shoot free throws. Derek John Luis averages eight points a game. Guess what? He's in double figures early. What a start for Iona. The 319 mark here with Donovan Klingon readying himself. At the free throw line, Klingon has been terrific already. And he cuts the deficit down to a point. There's your game summary. Again, the bench points have been a surprise. Debbie, look at that box score. What stands out? Well, that, you know, it's a two-point game, right? <laughs> With three minutes, that's the number one thing. But uh, 10 assists on 12 made baskets by UConn. They're moving the ball well. They're advanced passing against pressure. And Iona's not turning it over. Only two turnovers so far in the game. Jordan Hawkins, their number two scorer for Connecticut. If you've just joined us, scoreless, he's missed all five of his shots. But this game is tied at 32 as we cross the three minute mark before halftime. Here's a steal, Jenkins. This Iona team's for real. They are ready. They are amped up on the defensive end. They have made good decisions with the basketball. And on this end of the floor, Hawkins has not scored for UConn. 0 for 5. Take a look at 18 T5G. It takes us above the rim for one of the best plays of the day. So Jefferson called for the foul there. That was his first. This will be Calcaterra, the inbounder. Debbie, you can't overstate the pressure that is on Danny Hurley and this Connecticut program to break through. They've been upset first round each of the last two years, both as a high seed. And right now, they appear to have run into a little bit of a buzzsaw here in the Iona Gales. Yeah, Hawkins 0 for 6. I think they got to find a way to get him an easy one. This is Judy Joseph, the spin. Got it! Look at that quickness in the post. Klingon has altered several shots, but that is taking it right to the chest. UConn needs a timeout. Reminder coming up, AT&T at the half. We'll get you to our studio, scores and highlights, all the latest NCAA tournament news. AT&T at the half coming up next. UConn, one of their last nine. Hawkins is going to take a seat on the bench right now. You see he has not scored in the game today. He only had five points. In their Big East tournament loss to Marquette, but he led the conference in scoring in Big East play. First scoring champion in league play for the Huskies. Have to go all the way back to Richard Hamilton in 98-99. Right now the Huskies in a four-point hole. What do they turn to for offense? This is Jackson. Well short. And last touch by the Huskies. And I think Jackson's got to close the space off the bounce. He has hit a couple of threes late in the clock, as Coach Patino alluded to when he was doing his interview with A.J. Ross. This fascinating chess match between these two coaches, Patino and Hurley. There's the steal. Here comes Diara. Now they'll slow it down. Aleem! Got it! He's only a 31% three-point shooter. He's got it to one. 21 of UConn's 30 or 35 are behind the arc in the first half. Oh, great back door. There's Klingon. 
Donovan Klingon, the human eraser, turns and he's turned back. Jenkins, my goodness. Clayton, Jefferson, splash. Clayton, his decision making at a high rate of speed has been fantastic. I think when he passes it to you and you're open, it gives you confidence. Well, this has been highly intense. Oh. Clinging off balance. What a finish in the reverse. Two-point game is now Iona can hold for the final shot. Clinging with eight points, eight rebounds off the bench for Danny Hurley. Ten seconds. This is Jean Luis working against Jackson. Down to four seconds. Jenkins. And VR will take the foul here. It's only their fourth. I like it. I like that by Danny Hurley, not giving them a chance to get a rhythm three. Block on one end, and then Jenkins on the other. What a great pass by Clayton to Jefferson, who's only made 15 points all season coming into the game. Let's see how UConn handles this here if they foul again. They've got another couple to give. 2.9 seconds left. Jenkins, the inbounder. Gets it to Clayton. Clean look. Short. And that will take us to halftime here in Albany. The Iona Gales making their statement that they do indeed belong with Danny Hurley and the Huskies. A two-point lead for the 13-seeded Gales as we reach halftime. AJ standing by with Rick Pitino. That's right, Coach Pitino, Barrick, John Luis, and Walter Clayton Jr. seem to kick it into another gear. What can you say about their first half? Before? I'm so proud of our guys. Metric-wise, this is one of the best teams in the nation. We have tremendous respect for them. I can't be prouder than the Iona Gales. They played a tremendous half against a great team. I got to note your bench as well contributed significantly. How much is depth going to be critical in a game well, like this? We got a little depth. We got Cruz Davis back. But to tell you the truth, in the NCAA tournament, these timeouts are a marathon. You don't really need depth. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. What a first half for Rick Pitino and the Gales as they will take a two-point lead into the locker room. 39-37. We'll send you to at and at the half after these messages. You're watching coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Game pressure shifts to UConn. The pressure will be on them to be able to finish off the game in the next 20 minutes. Yeah, the minus five on the glass. Huge win for Iona. This is the number one rebounding team in the country in the Huskies. And you mentioned Hawkins scoreless so far. Adama Sinogo, number one scorer in the Big East this year. Only six points. Didn't play a ton of minutes down the stretch as Klingon really played well. That is Hawkins, and he wastes no time. A potential four-point play. For a guy that's struggling, not a surprise to see Danny Hurley run something for Hawkins right out of the locker room. He gets a great look, an and one outside the three-point line, and that is the eighth triple for UConn. 24 of their 41 from outside the arc. Let's check in with AJ. Will Spiro with five lead changes and four ties. Danny Hurley told his team they have to be more aggressive to counter Iona's pressure, meaning if they have to at times make a second or a third move, he'd rather that than a rush shot. He said defensively they have to lock down Barrett Jean Louis, who already surpassed his season average in that first half, guys. AJ said the key word pressure. Which of these two teams can handle it here down the stretch in this kind of a spot on the biggest stage they've ever played on? They come up at the Jackson, no. So no go. Another chance has his pocket picked. Jenkins ahead to Clayton. For a little give and go. And Clayton. And the number one free throw shooter in the country will step to the line. To try to tie this thing for Rick Patino and the Gales. 
Well, you can watch CBS HQ for free. You get a 24-7 coverage of the big dance and all the biggest moments in sports. Catch tournament highlights, picks, previews, recaps, and much more. Just download the CBS Sports app and watch today. Not only did this kid lead the country in three-point shooting this year, sixth best free throw percentage in the history of the sport. He's only missed five all year. Better than 95%. And part of my prep was watching a lot of film, obviously. I spoke to Greg Paulus, the head coach at Niagara, who's a part of the, the MAC, and uh, he said, Jenkins and Clayton are as in sync as any two guards as he can remember in a while. And he also said Rick Pitino has certainly elevated. Great play in the transition. Sanogo, vicious. So a two-point game, Clayton trying to find his spot. Missed it. Batted around. Hawkins and Clayton in a fight. Last touch by the Huskies. I've been talking about advanced pass all game. This is a tremendous leave by Jackson to Sonoma. Sonoma. Sonoga, excuse me. What a find in transition and what a rim run. So a quick strike for the Huskies. They work it to the corner. Three-pointer from Shema, not even close. So just under two minutes into the second half, UConn and Iota with a second round date with St. Mary's on the line. Hawkins, but well, he's got that look. Pure, beautiful. Had a great year. So meantime here, Jordan Hawkins starting to ignite for the Huskies. A couple of big shots to begin the second half after a scoreless first 20 minutes. Iona meantime now, Debbie. How do they regroup psychologically? See the run for the Huskies. As Iona has been blitzed. Told you the top. Iona, 14 straight wins, third longest active streak in Division I. Haven't lost since January 29th. But they are taking on a different kind of animal here against the Huskies. Great clear out, a good call coming off the timeout by Danny Hurley. Hawkins has the hot hand. He went from 0 for 6 in the first half to having seven points here quickly in the second. They clear it out for him. Inbounder is Jackson, out of Hawkins, who resets. Newton. Aaron pass as they finally get it to Sonogo. Beautiful drop step. Inside, puts it down, he's just too much. Nineteen and eleven in the Big East semifinal loss to Marquette for Sonogo. What a season it has been for the junior from Mali. Without Clayton on the floor, I think you've got to go to Jenkins here. A little bit of a danger zone here for the Gales. Largest lead for the Huskies. Big shot, John Luis. John Luis moving up the scouting report chart. What a game. Again, a kid who shoots 24% from three. He's hit a couple here. And meantime, free throw is coming up. As Obama Sonogo to the free throw line for two. Well, UConn does such a great job of getting Sonogo isolated on the inside. He's so good with his footwork on that baseline. To our UConn shooting shoot. Never touch one. Adama Sonogo. Well, Sonogo, go back a couple of years as a freshman, kind of a minor role for Danny Hurley, had the early foul issues that he had to work through. But last year really broke out for this program, really 15 points, nine rebounds, and then this year, significant strides. The efficiency, Debbie, in his offensive game 
and led the Big East in scoring at 17 per night. Yeah, he slimmed down, and his efficiencies are better on both ends of the floor, more durable. And he's just under five offensive rebounds a game. What a weapon. Let's get more on Sunogo now with AJ. Well, guys, when I was speaking with Andre Jackson the other day, he told me Adama Sunogo's presence inside automatically makes it easier for Andre and everybody else outside. Teams have to double team Sunogo, and if they don't, it's a bucket. He passes out, he has great passing ability, and he has some ability on the perimeter too, guys. Yeah, his game has been incredible, AJ, the development, the growth. And Shema trying to get his offensive game going. Well, he's got Clayton on him. That was a switch. They didn't get the ball to him fast enough. See the shooting struggles for Iona since the intermission. Jackson, again, they dare him to shoot. Little backdoor, smart pass. And even better looks, a no goal. And he's headed back to the line. And the Huskies starting to flex. And this offense centered around Sonogo. Starting to show what it's capable of. A chance in three when we come back. What a little stretch here for Jordan Hawkins. They were waiting him to join the party, and he has Debbie in a big way. After 0 for 6 in the first half, they run some stuff for him in the second. It's not just the basket cut as his work off screens, it's the exit cut and how quickly he gets his feet on the floor and gets his hips turned around. Our advanced stats presented by Invesco QQQ. That's where he does most of his damage, coming off screens, exactly what we saw there. And W, you talk to people around this program, they say that Hawkins was so crushed after their Big East semifinal loss to Marquette, didn't play well, he only scored five points, didn't shoot it well. And that continued in the first half in this game. So you wonder sometimes, young kids, how do they regroup psychologically? But boy, he has shown his toughness here. Whatever Danny Hurley told him at halftime has worked. Well, once a few shots start falling, then you start to see a bigger ramp. And the question now, can Iona regroup? Their fourth turnover. Since the game was tied at 41, it's been a 12-2 run for the Huskies. Remember, Iona led this game by two at halftime. Caravan. Offensive rebound. And now UConn starting to lean on him. Yeah, they're doing a great job of spreading the floor and spreading out that defense. And Sonogo, 10 second half points. Boy, making it look easy against the freshman Sunday. Too big, too strong, two feet in the paint, two points. Biggest lead for UConn. With just over five minutes gone by. Here's John Luis to the left. Tough, no, and it's cleaned up. Sunday. Sunday, a kid who has lost about 70 pounds since he arrived at Iona. And he has given Rick Patino a couple of impressive minutes off the bench. Best Coke ever? Only one way to find out, take a taste. There's the Hall of Famer. And Danny Hurley. Told you about the pressure and what this UConn team has had in the back of its mind. Bounce from the first round of this tournament each of the last two years. He's desperately trying to break through. So no go, look at the big fella running the floor. Another reset, Hawkins elevates. A little bit too much. And it's tracked down by Junior Joseph. This will be contact against Newton in the transition just as they settled into their half court set. So second on Newton, the East Carolina transfer. Debbie, what can Rick Pitino do here to try to get their offense back on track? You no, know, I think it might be time for Walter Clayton Jr. to take over a little bit, right? He has four assists. He's got 10 points. He's been looking to distribute. I think he's got to get to the free throw line. He's only made one trip there. You know he's automatic if he can get there. He's got to be able to get in the paint and look to score. 
Well, Debbie, this is what separates the really good coaches from the all-timers. You know, your team may be outmatched. What can you draw up? What can you do to impact the game? One or three-pointer. Won't go that time. All right, Ivy and Ayo with a hot hand in the first half. As the Gales come up empty. Jackson. Push up. And it goes. I only just can't stop him right now. Jackson, they say, was held. Ariona trying to get their ball movement going once again as they draw contact. Well, you can watch rip around coverage of all men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with Fast Break. It's presented by Nissan, and it's in the March Madness Live app. Just scan the QR code now to download. So Adama Sonogo will get a much deserved rest. I don't think Iona is sad to see him sit. No, but Clinton had eight points and eight boards in the first half. He did his job. Three pointer won't go for Jenkins. Kept alive with Jefferson. Clayton! Massive shot for the Gales. He's got to look. He's got to be more aggressive, more assertive. Newton is fouled in the transition in the backcourt. That'll be number three on Clayton. Jenkins and Clayton connected. Debbie, we mentioned it at the top, the strength of this Iona team by far has been their starting backcourt, Clayton and Jenkins. And if they're gonna have any kind of a chance here down the stretch, those two have to be huge. That was the sixth team foul, by the way, against Iona. Next one puts UConn at the line. What a drive and finish. Newton. They love that pin down action. They have so many options off it. Clayton taking some contact from the back. And Mr. Automatic at the free throw line will shoot two with Iona in a 10 point hole. Just good action. On the strong side, you've got Jackson on the weak side. You can pinch right here and help. You gotta be in better position to help when you see that drive coming at you and you're guarding Jackson who's standing outside the three-point line. So here's Clayton, still only a sophomore. What a player he's become, player of the year in the MAC. 44% three-point shooter. I think the last year, the dynamic in their backcourt, he was only a freshman playing with the guys a lot older than he was. This year, the fit with Jenkins, people around the program have talked about the impact and the influence Jenkins has had on him. They room on the road. And boy, is he taking that next step. Eight point game as we cross the 13 minute mark. He's got to get a couple of stops in a row right here for Iona. If you can get these couple of stops, you can put some game pressure on UConn. Because right now, UConn is running their stuff. Calcaterra dropping dimes, and it's Klingon. So talented on the offensive end. What a weapon to have the size and the skill off the bench. Clayton probing, defended tightly by Aline. Junior Joseph Klingon, boy, he's just imprinted and impacted this game. So many areas, as the Gales will have eight to shoot. No one within seven or eight feet. There's Donovan's father, Bill, we mentioned Donovan losing his mom back in the eighth grade. Five years ago. What a moment this could be for that family. There's Donovan trying to push his Huskies to a Sunday date with St. Mary's. Shot clock down to three. They have to fire with Jenkins. No too much. Rebound Klingon. Ninth rebound for Donovan Klingon. The stage not big for the freshman. Five out, 
with Klingon at the top of the floor. He's a really good decision maker also. Jackson gets a screen. Calcaterra, got it! Boy, this UConn bench has been sensational. Wow. They are really starting to separate now. And their bench has been a big part of it. Largest lead of the day for the Huskies. Iona desperately looking for an answer. Junior Joseph. How did he put that one down? Left hand over the 7-2 Klingon. A great deep catch. Got to bury the shot blocker in the rim. This is Aline, steps into a long two, missed it. And the Gales control the glass. There's Jean Luis. Junior Joseph taking the big freshman down to the box. The spin. Ling it didn't bite. 15 to shoot. Jenkins. Klingon swallowed him up. Here comes Diara. Boy, the little hesitation couldn't finish. This is Cruz Davis in for the first time. Davis, his first appearance since the middle of February. He's been out with that Achilles injury. Can he be the kid that gives them a shot in the arm? But right now it is all UConn trying to will themselves into the round of 32. Just about at the midway point of the second half, and UConn, the number four seed in the West, starting to pull away at the moment, up 11. Time now for Thrilling Drives. It's presented by Nissan. Huskies, one of the top dunking teams in the country. They'll be showing you some of their handiwork. There's above the rim, and then there's UConn. <laughs> that's the way they played today. Advanced pass thrown over to the top of Iona's defense. Can't get a higher percentage look than that. So here's Cruz Davis, young man, freshman, Texas kid, who's such a huge piece. Huge hand in their win over Princeton earlier in the season. But then the Achilles injury has been out since February the 10th. What a moment to reinsert himself into the mix. One of two at the line. It's a 10-point game with 10 and change left in regulation. Pressure here will take UConn a little deeper into their options. Quarter three. At that time from Calcaterra. And Clayton controls the glass. Clayton, this will be a little bit of a bump against Hawkins. Clayton has such a great change of pace. He's so shifty with the basketball. UConn's played really good defense without fouling. They did put Iona in the bonus in the first half. Next one, though. And that was their sixth team foul. So both teams will be in the bonus on the next whistle each side. Jenkins, mid-range J, cash money. Danis Jenkins, all max second team. Also led the conference in assists. The junior out of Dallas. Coach Patino really important. His guys to get a stop. Switching. A beautiful lead bounce. Calcaterra to Sonogo. Clayton's going to fire. Step back three. Missed it. Oh, desperately needed that. It's last touch by the Huskies. So a 10-point game as we cross the nine-minute mark. A couple of changes for Danny Hurley. Newton, Aline, and Jackson all in. When Danny Hurley has substituted today, he's not had any drop-off at all. 
As a matter of fact, there's been some elevation in those minutes. Well, Debbie, that's one of the things that sets this team apart. You hit on it earlier. The quality of depth that they have, not just depth. One of the reasons why this is a top 10 team this season. Clayton fading, misses badly. Wilkinson up there, he's just too big. He's too much. He gets such great position. And he runs, part of that durability, that slim down effort. For how far this young man has come over the last two years, his 18th career game with 20 or more. And right now, the Huskies are carving him up in Albany. With UConn now opening up a 12-point lead, points in the paint, bench scoring, and Adama Sonogo showing the rest of the country just how legit he is. I mean, Sonogo, six points in the first half. He has 20 in the game, and he is getting deep position. He has scored off their half-court sets. He's also scored in their transition game. Can this Iona team now dig deep against the Huskies team that is playing with all kinds of confidence? Shot clock down to seven. Jefferson. Now to Junior Joseph. The spin up over the top somehow against the no go. He's got so much better skill left and right. Counters over his left shoulder. Sonogo's doing a little bit of everything, including breaking pressure. A lean taking contact. Little chest bump from Junior Joseph. We've seen a little half hook. We've seen him score in transition. He gets great position here. Counter. A couple bumps create a little separation. And then high arcing finish. This will be a two shot foul for Naheem Aleen. 81% free throw shooter. Senior out of Buford, Georgia. Virginia Tech transfer. 1,000 point scorer in his career. But this Connecticut team, Debbie, last year as a five seed, bounced out of the first round by New Mexico State. Two years ago as a seven seed, knocked off by Maryland. A lot of pressure on Danny Hurley to get that monkey off his back. And right now, the Huskies starting to look fierce. The Caravan boy just couldn't quite squeeze it. It's a turnover. Full court pressure. And it's going to be a reaching foul. Danny Hurley doesn't like the call. And it is a one and one here. Seventh team foul against the Huskies. Well, this is what Iona wants. Clock stop, get to the line. Very good free throw shooting team. You know the full court pressure's coming. Only one time as UConn thrown. The pass over the top, off the out of bounds line. You gotta be careful. Make them come back, see if you can get a trap. Mm. It's a big miss. But the margin for error for the Gale is so slim right now. We're even a critical point at the free throw line. Hawkins. This is Jackson. Six to shoot. Outside Caravan. Way too much. Sonogo just flicks it back up. Boy, he had the presence of mind. Didn't get iron, so the shot clock didn't reset. How good has Adama Sonogo been here in the second half? And there's the interior defense. Jefferson never had a chance. Jackson ahead. Newton wide open. And this is going to be a rebounding foul against Alex Caravan and Danny Hurley, incredulous. That's going to be number three on the freshman. I'll tell you what, his halftime adjustments, his team coming out in the second half. 
senior doesn't like it either. That's huge, Debbie. It is a one and one. Puts him at the free throw line. Well, and Coach Early, he he got Jordan Hawkins going, and then Sonogo inside. Very well crafted in the second half. Mm. Back to back, one and one. And ones. Iona now six of ten at the strike. elevates got it he is a lethal three-point shooter and he's starting to cook he's starting to pour it on now jenkins splits two up with the floor missed it but fouled and more free throws coming up have you seen the confidence in this young man change from the first half to the second half What Debbie, the quickness of his release was pretty outstanding. First team all Big East, Jordan Hawkins. He averages making three threes a game. And that led the Big East. And as Danis Jenkins hits on the front end. Jenkins the transfer after the last two years at Pacific. What an addition he was this year for Rick Pitino and the Gales. As the Hall of Fame coach paces in front of that bench. A couple of big free throws. But Iona still in a 15-point hole with just under six minutes left. The winner of this one advances to take out Randy Bennett and St. Mary's. After the Gales knocked off VCU earlier here in Albany. And look at that second half scoring. Hawkins again, boy, the confidence level. You can feel it. Tournament summary on the second full day of the tournament. Top seeded teams, 18 and five, six and one so far today. Xavier, that tight one against Kennesaw State. They were down 13 in the first half before they were finally able to restore order. Debbie, just think of this UConn team when they've got everything working and Hawkins is playing like this. On their best day, they're as good as any team in the country. There's no question. Man. The way they accelerate through their action, the multiple counters they have, the weapons that Coach Hurley has. Sonogo anchoring the inside, and then Hawkins shooting it like he's been able to shoot it here in the second. And then their defense has been good. So this thing is ballooned down to an 18-point lead with five and change left. Contact against the Huskies. And it was a two-point deficit at the half. Hawkins had not scored first play. They run him off some screening action to get him a three. So two shots here, double bonus with Jenkins at the line. And yeah, Debbie, just think to what Hurley inherited when he stepped into this job five years ago. Back-to-back -back losing seasons to begin his tenure. A lot of heavy lifting that needed to be done, but. They're in the dance for a third straight year. They're certainly the best team that he has had. Highest seed for them in the tournament since their national championship season in 2011. Well, they defend at a high level. They've got elite level guard play in the backcourt, especially when Hawkins is scoring. And they've got size at the rim on both ends to be able to score and defend. And then they got a player like Jackson with size. You can put him on the top of the floor. He's an excellent decision maker. Huskies nearly turned it over. And wisely here trying to run some clock. 
So no goal. Working on the box, the spin. Boy, he's just so gifted. Missed it, but he cleans up his mess. Unstoppable. He catches deep. It's hard to bring the double. Jenkins takes a little bit of a whack. And his parade to the free throw line continues. Sonogo does demand a double, but not everyone brings it. And because he gets such a quality catch so deep, it's a long ways to go to dig. And he's quick with his footwork inside. He spins off the contact. Watch this right here. Look where he catches, right above the block, spins, takes his defender to the rim. Great extra effort. You can tune in to Inside March Madness and check out the play of the day presented by Buick Encore GX. As this busy second full day of the tournament continues, we are at MVP Arena, downtown Albany, New York. Game two of our quadruple header here on TBS. Early game saw the St. Mary's Gales at large out of the West Coast Conference. Get past VCU, and now they await the winner of this one. This is Tristan Newton. What a void he filled this year. Team and coaching staff that were searching for a lead guard. What a player he's been. He's senior out of El Paso, Texas. That's the right vernacular too. Lead guard, not necessarily the point guard. There's a little bit of a difference in the two. Hawkins taking out everyone. Look at Tanoko, he just keeps on coming. When you're not a natural point guard, being the lead guard just can change the complexion of how you approach the game. Sonogo, 26 points, 12 rebounds, 6 on the offensive glass. Those are monstrous numbers for the tournament. Shot clock at 3, Junior Joseph has to hurry, Sonogo! Oh, he's active. He is active. And that contingent from Stores starting to make themselves heard here in Albany. Newton inside for Jackson. Ready to raise the roof off this place. Sonogo! Unreal! Bill Murray liking it. May have to write him into his next Hollywood script. That young man is playing the game of his life. Sonogo inside. Defense. How about the three-point stroke? Well, it's a star-studded affair. Both in the seats and on the floor. Adama Sonogo has just devastated the Iona Gales down the stretch. And he's impacted the stat sheet all across the board. Rebounds, steals, assists. Even a long two, and Bill Murray loves it. Sonogo, another double-double. Take a look at his numbers. He's done all this damage, most of it in the second half. So Donovan Klingen, Debbie, in the first half was the guy. Eight points, eight rebounds. He barely has played in the second half because of this. Can you imagine having that kind of a luxury as a coach? Unbelievable. It kind of reminds me a little bit of what Matt Painter had last year with Purdue. With right. Zach Eady and uh, Travion, Travion Jackson. Yeah, Travion Williams. No, Travion Williams, you're right. Yep. Beg your pardon. And they played about 20 minutes apiece. They split it right down the middle. As we're taking a look at the net. There's a, I think Sonogo hung the net. They got to fix it after that deep two he hit. Yeah, so that last shot from Sonogo changed from a three to a two. And now the officials say that they're going to delay it until they fix the netting here. Another look at what happened. Jackson, the high flyer. 
I think Rick Pitino's telling the officials, we, we don't need to fix the netting. Looks like they're going to fix it. Out comes the ladder. Got some net surgery done here in Albany. Now this is what you call working under pressure. Now a little bit of a netting that uh, came dislodged, perhaps ripped. Trying to get that uh, taken care of before they resume play. As we take a look at our game reset, as UConn has opened up a 20-point lead. So they'll continue to work. We'll get play resumed when we come back on TBS. So this is Frank. He's working on the netting here. He is the house electrician. And we thank Frank for working as diligently and as quickly as he can. Debbie, I, th I think he's doing great. I think he's, I'd like to have him come to my house and uh, hang my <laughs> Christmas lights next year. He's doing a pretty good job. No Rick Pitino pacing in front of that bench. Still fiery. Of course, his name has been in the headlines over the last couple of weeks. With uh, Mike Anderson being fired at St. John's. Of course, we have all seen the reports of uh, Pitino being linked to that job, as well as a couple of others. He's been asked all the questions this week, and, and as he has told the media, told us yesterday, look, I'm invested in this team right now, and, and you certainly believe it. I mean, you do, and he... You know, had his time in, in Greece in the Euro League, and he loved it. He said, uh, you know, once he got fired from Louisville and cleared of all charges, he was in Greece and was playing golf and hanging out with his friends, and it just it wasn't enough to fill the void. He was miserable, and his wife Joanne said, "You're going to go to Euro League, and you're going to take that job that you've been offered." And he, he went, and he loved his year and a half over there. And said it rejuvenated him on so many levels. Hall of Famer out of coaching basically for almost two years. But uh, he has been reborn in New Rochelle at the helm of this Iona program. And so their journey may be coming to an end here in Albany. Just ran into a buzzsaw in this UConn team in the second half. He told us yesterday, Spiro, that it's the best time he's had coaching since his Providence days. A little shout out again to Billy Donovan. That final four team. A little serendipity. 40 years since Patino made his first appearance on the NCAA tournament stage with Boston University. And to this day, this story, all about the Huskies from UConn. Now people are going to start to wonder just how far this UConn team can go. Just so good, so deep. As they start to look ahead to that potential second round date with St. Mary's. And the second half Blues, see their recent NCAA tournament history. Debbie, second time they've gotten to the dance since Patino took over three years ago. Iona, one tournament win in their history it was 1980. Jeff Rulin, the star of that team, all-timer in the history of their program. That win was later vacated. So officially still looking for their first tournament win. But Debbie, they sure have built one of the better mid-majors, certainly in the Northeast. One of three, one of... Uh, only three mid-majors with eight bids in the last 11 tournaments. Gonzaga and New Mexico State, the only other two teams on that list. You said it so well. It's such a great, rich history at Iona. And basketball from 
Jeff Ruin and Jim Valvano from Tim Walsh. And to Rick Pitino. He says he loves it. He loves representing Iona. Both teams will start to empty their bench. As Anton Brookshire unable to squeeze it. And Iona turns it over. But what a day for that young man, Adama Sinogo. Didn't quite get his career high in points, but considering the stage and the stakes, he has never been better. This is the aura. And to the paint. Smart pass. Klingon. Connecticut interestingly showing a little bit of press before they drop back as we are inside of two minutes left. Playing some zone. Nice pass underneath, but Sunday could not finish. And it's last touch by the Gales. Both teams will start to get their young players a chance. There's Andrew Hurley, Danny's son. There's Bob Andrea looking on from the seats. There's Grandpa Bob Sr. There's Bob in the red shirt. Three generations of Hurleys here in Albany. What a great moment this is going to be for the family. They'll enjoy it. You know, Bob Sr., Danny, I'm sure going to be in front of the TV later. Yes, absolutely. With Arizona State taking on TCU. As Bobby Hurley Jr. Hoping to get to the second round. It's Richie Springs with the turnover. And just over a minute left. I be Nayo. Danny Hurley wants a timeout. And Danny Hurley is going to get some of his end of bench guys on the floor. There's your baby brackets. Impressive second half showing by St. Mary's earlier. And now the at large out of the West Coast Conference. Starting to make some early preparations for UConn. What a matchup that's going to be Debbie on Sunday. Mitchell Saxon for Randy Bennett's club is going to have to be able to. Hold his own on the inside against Klingon and Sonogo. UConn unable to get the shot off there. With Apostolos Rumoglu. Seems to get the young Greek in the game. There you go. Final 25 seconds. Debbie, how impressed are you with the Huskies? Uh, how far can this team go? Very impressed. They check a lot of boxes for sure. Their second half adjustments were outstanding. Big number in the second half. The right people scoring. Their defense at the rim. Good depth. Checking a lot of boxes for Danny Hurley. Fantastic season for Iona. 27 wins. But their March bid into the madness ends in the first round here in Albany against this juggernaut of UConn. Adama Sonogo, masterful, 28 points, 13 rebounds, and it will be the Huskies and the Gales on Sunday here in Albany. And Rick Pitino walking off stage right who knows what's next in the Hall of Famer's future. And let that speculation continue. A.J. Raw standing by with Danny Hurley. That's right, Coach Hurley. This is your third straight NCAA tournament appearance. The first round has been a challenge the last few years. How does it feel to get that 
you know, over that hump this year in front of what feels like a home crowd out here. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we played well in the first half. They made a lot of shots, so I felt a lot better about our team. Last year in the first half, we didn't play very well, so I thought we, uh, at halftime, we knew that we were going to play a big second half and, and, and separate. Well, your adjustments at halftime were evident. Jordan Hawkins, Adama Sanogo really stepped it up, as well as your bench. Talk about the versatility of this team on both ends of the floor. If you want to win this time of year, you know, your big guns have got to show up and they've got to play at a high level. And obviously, you know, getting Jordan going early in the, uh, early in the second half helped. You know, when Adama showed up like, uh, like the beast he is. <laughs> exactly. Congratulations. Best of luck. Thank you.